Hi, I'm Rawad Mshamish. The aim of the study I will be presenting in this video was to clarify the meaning of the commonly used word community. This study has been completed to inform the work of a research program on quality improvement and services for Ontarians with intellectual and developmental disabilities, also known as IDD. First, I will present the results and discuss their implications. If you're interested in the methods, please wait till the end of the video. Community is a vague concept that is hard to define. The term community is used a lot in the academic peer-reviewed literature without a consensual definition. For instance, if you search for the term community in a database called PsycInfo, you will get more than 100,000 studies. Many of those studies have different definitions of community or they don't even define it. In the Cambridge Specialized Dictionary of Psychology, community psychology is defined as a subfield of psychology dedicated to study communities but no definition of community is actually provided. In dictionaries such as Merriam-Webster, you will find several definitions of community. Another context in which the term community is used is in the World Health Organization guidelines on community-based rehabilitation. This approach is recommended to empower persons with disabilities to access and benefit from education, employment, health, and social services. However, the World Health Organization guidelines do not include a definition of community. Among persons with disabilities, persons with IDD are particularly vulnerable to the exclusion from their communities. IDDs are characterized by cognitive limitations and difficulties with adaptive behaviors, and these limitations appear before the age of 18. In this study, we aim to create a better understanding of community for future research in any discipline, and to help the development of policies and services supporting the inclusion of adults with IDD in their own communities. To do so, we have reviewed definitions of community in published scientific papers and conducted focus groups with persons with IDD and members of their communities. We identified 10 common themes and three uncommon themes in the reviewed definitions of community. The most common theme was physical proximity. It refers to geography or location. For instance, neighbors belong to the same community because they live in the same neighborhood. Shared was the second most common theme. It refers to anything that members of a community have in common, such as shared interests, goals, perspectives, or any other attributes. The third common theme was group. Any collection of individuals, networks, or clans are considered a group. A community always consists of more than just one person. Belonging was the fourth most common theme. Feeling a sense of unity, commitment, and bonding together over time are all examples of belongingness. If you don't feel like you belong to a community, then you are not part of it. The fifth common theme was bounded. It defines community by who is excluded as much as by who is included. For example, Christians and Muslims are part of two communities where each one is bounded by its own faith. However, Christians and Muslims can belong to the same community in a different context, for example, as neighbors. Number six was interaction. Participation, communication, or any other social interaction is categorized under this theme. Members of the same community interact with each other one way or another. Support was number seven on the list of common themes. Community can't exist without solidarity, help during times of hardship, responsibility, cooperation, and accountability. Symbol was common theme number eight. This theme says that community is just a concept. It is abstract, theoretical, and ambiguous. The presence or absence of one of the factors in a community is often subjective and conceptual rather than observable. The ninth common theme out of 10 that we have identified was territory free. Community could be based on certain factors, but it doesn't have to be location. Online gamers, for example, have their own virtual communities. Finally, the last common theme is sustained. Communities have to be able to maintain, self-organize, preserve, and manage themselves. When a certain community migrates to a different location, for example, it has to be able to settle and organize again in order to survive. The remaining three themes we found were uncommon. This means that they were rarely mentioned in a reported definition of community. The first one was process. According to this theme, community is in a constant state of change and it is elastic. It does not just form and stop there. 
The second uncommon theme was diverse. If we consider Canada as a community, for example, it is very diverse because its citizens are from different backgrounds. The third and last uncommon theme was tangible. Although community is a concept, as I have mentioned earlier, it could be regarded as a concrete formation or organization. For example, the teachers at my school, the doctors in the hospitals I visit, and the neighbors who live beside me are all concrete representations of my community. In the other part of our study, we had focus group discussions with persons with IDD and members of their own community. We asked them what they thought community means and what it represents to them. A new theme, not found in, in the literature, emerged from one of the focus groups. The theme is unpaid. The new theme was reported by a supporting member of a person with IDD. She stated that the person with IDD has a special relationship with the people who go to the same church because, in her own words, the relationship is unpaid. As a supporting member, she is paid to help the person with IDD, but would their relationship be the same if it were more natural or, in other words, unpaid? We propose a definition of community using the common themes we identified. A community is symbolized by a bounded and sustained group of people who share attributes, interact, develop a sense of belonging, and support each other. Although they are common themes, we did not include physical proximity or territory free in the proposed definition because they are contradictory. It depends on the context of a community, whether it is related to geography or other factors, such as support or shared attributes. Symbol and tangible were also contradictory themes, but only symbol was a common theme. Some people might think community is a conceptualization, but others, for example, persons with IDD, might only think of their community in terms of what they are able to perceive and observe. Although a community is based on a group of people who share attributes, there is always diversity. This is why we found another pair of contradictory themes, which is shared and diverse. In this case as well, only shared is a common theme. To conclude, there is little agreement on the definition of community. Authors might disagree because they study different populations and different contexts. Definitions might also change with time. For example, we now have virtual communities that did not exist when previous definitions of community were developed. A major contribution of the study is that it informs policy development and service planning that communities are not necessarily based on physical proximity. So, in order to improve the social inclusion and community participation of persons with IDD, decision makers and service providers should pay further attention to the unpaid and natural relationships that persons with IDD have in groups which they feel that they belong to. For those of you who wanted to know about the methods we used to get our results, we did a literature review in three databases from psychology, philosophy, and sociology. We included papers published in English between 2003 and 2013. We searched for studies that include the term community as well as the keywords define or construct in the title and the subject of the study. We also held three focus group meetings that consisted of four persons with IDD along with members of their own communities who are paid support staff. We asked them three questions. One, what does the word community mean to you? Two, who do you consider to be part of the participants community and why? Three, is there anybody else who's part of the participants' community and why? The definitions reported in the literature and the focus group transcriptions were cut into meaningful statements that were categorized under the same theme if they had similar meanings or if they were synonyms. We checked for inter-rater and intra-rater reliability. The themes were identified as uncommon if they appeared in less than five studies and less than five definitions. The rest were identified as common themes. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the MAPS website or contact my supervisor, Virginie Kobigo, Assistant Professor at the University of Ottawa and Crex Senior Researcher.